For centuries, there have been tales of humanoid creatures stalking the wilderness all over the world. The most famous of these being creatures like Bigfoot or even the Yeti. But they are by no means the only ones. There is another creature that is commonly associated with Louisiana, Maryland, and Texas. A creature that can trace its origins to both Greek and Roman mythology, the Goatman. There are a few different goat men, or so-called hairy humanoids, associated with this urban legend. Some with alleged sightings of the creature and others merely existing in myths and legends. Let's take a look at a few of these, starting with the one that's probably the most famous, the Maryland Goatman. A creature that is said to terrorize lovers, chase teens, and decapitate dogs. A creature that supposedly jumps onto cars and slashes the tires of these cars to make sure that his victims cannot get away. Who then takes these people and drags them into the forest, never to be seen again. In the early 1970s, there were multiple disappearances and or deaths of dogs within Prince George's County, and many started believing that the culprit was a creature of some kind. And soon, stories would emerge of a half-goat, half-human hybrid. No one knows exactly where this legend comes from, but one of the more common variations of the legend goes like this. There was once a scientist working at the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center, where he would perform various experiments on goats. Over time, this scientist found himself delving into more dubious experiments. And one day, one of these experiments went horribly wrong, and DNA from a goat would fuse with the scientist's blood. This fusion would cause the scientist to mutate into a half-goat, half-man with a thirst for blood. He took to wielding an axe, and is said to roam parts of Beltsville and Bowie at night. Another tale is a bit simpler and says that the goat man was actually a goat farmer who was terrorized by a bunch of teenagers who would kill his goats. And after he learned the truth of what happened to his goats, he would go crazy and went after the teenagers with an axe. One reported sighting of the goat man comes from 1977, when a young couple went out on a date. While on this date, they suddenly heard scratching outside the car. Turning on the headlights revealed the goat man standing near their car, and as soon as the lights came on, he started running towards them, waving his axe around. He swung the axe at the car, but the young couple managed to get away with only a slight scratch on the car. As I said, it's unclear exactly where the legend comes from, but it's believed that the Maryland Goatman originated in a news article from 1971 that connected an old folk tale of a goat man to the disappearance and decapitation of a puppy. The Pope Lick monster is part man, part goat, or part sheep in some cases. It's a creature that supposedly lives beneath the Norfolk Southern Railroad trestle over Floyd's Fork Creek in the Fisherville area near Louisville, Kentucky. 
In most accounts of this creature, the creature appears as a human-goat hybrid with fur-covered goat legs, an alabaster-skinned face with short, sharp horns protruding from the forehead. There are numerous urban legends about the creature's origins and how it hunts its victims. Some accounts say that the Pope-lick monster can use hypnosis or voice mimicry to lure people to their doom. Other accounts say that like the Maryland Goatman, the Pope-lick monster will jump onto the roofs of cars that are passing beneath the trestle. And, like the Maryland Goatman, there are also some accounts that say that the Popelic monster will sometimes be wielding an axe. There are some legends that say that the Popelic monster is a creature that escaped from the circus and vowed revenge after the horrible mistreatment that it had suffered. This legend also says that the creature would escape the circus after the train it had been traveling on derailed on the trestle. Unlike the Maryland Goatman, there doesn't seem to be any reported sightings of this creature, so the Popelic monster only seems to exist in myths and urban legends. Though the Pope Lake train trestle has become a favorite spot for kids and unfortunately there have been several deaths and accidents at this location, which is often caused by the heavy freight trains that travel across the bridge several times daily. In Texan folklore, there is a creature inhabiting Lake Worth at the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge, just outside Fort Worth. A creature that is often described as part man, part goat, with scales and long clawed fingers. The sightings of this creature started in 1969 and would be reported in local newspapers. One article wrote about a man named John Reichardt, whose car was supposedly damaged by the creature after it had jumped out of a tree onto the car. And supposedly, he had deep scratches and prints on his car to prove his story. Local police would investigate these claims, but they found no evidence of the monster in the Lake Worth or Greater Island area. Newspapers would also publish a photograph that was taken by a man named Alan Plaster. The photograph allegedly showed the Lake Worth monster and is the only photographic evidence of this creature. Plaster would later describe the creature as a man-sized white furball. And he claimed that he took the picture while he was driving past the nature center in 1969. Plaster would even describe the sighting as a prank, saying that whatever the creature was, it seemed to want him to see it. And, coincidentally, reports of this creature would cease when school resumed, leading many to conclude that all of these alleged sightings were nothing but pranks carried out by high school students. The Waterford Sheepman is a creature that allegedly terrorized the small rural town of Waterford, Pennsylvania in the early 1970s. The creature was said to lurk in farm fields and would stalk the animals. It was even known to violently attack humans. Many locals would speak of a creature that resided in a cave on Baghdad Road. One woman who lived on Baghdad Road supposedly saw the creature running across the road. During the 1970s, there was much talk of this creature, and supposedly hundreds of people had had a sighting of the creature that would also become known as the Goatman. These sightings and the legend would fade with time. And since the close of the 1970s, there haven't been any more sightings of this creature. Another location said to be home to a goat man is the old Alton Bridge. 
a bridge connecting the Texas cities of Denton and Copper Canyon. It is locally known as the Goatman's Bridge, and legend has it that the bridge is haunted by a half-man, half-goat figure called the Goatman. The legend of this Goatman goes like this. There once was a farmer named Oscar Washburn. After moving to the area, Oscar would become known as a very dependable and honest businessman, and he would become known as the Goatman by locals. Using this name as a bit of a marketing tool, he decided to put up a sign on Alton Bridge that said, This way to the Goatman. It's very important here to note that Oscar was a black man, and that the KKK was present in the area, some even holding positions within the local government. So when Oscar hung this sign on the bridge, the KKK wasn't very happy about it, and they decided to cross the bridge and kidnapped Oscar from his family. They then brought him to Old Alton Bridge, hung a noose around his neck, and threw him off the bridge. The legend goes that when they looked over the bridge to see if Oscar was still alive, they found that the noose was empty. Being the evil cowards that they were, this made them panic and they decided to return to Oscar's home and kill his wife and his children. It's said that if you cross the bridge at night without headlights, as the KKK once did, you will be met on the other side by the goat man. The bridge is also said to be haunted with voices being heard at night and some people have even reported feeling someone touching them even though no one else was there. As I mentioned in the beginning, the stories of goat men can be traced as far back as Greek and Roman mythology. Roman mythology speaks of a creature known as the Faun, a half-human, half-goat creature. In Roman mythology, Fauns were the spirits of rustic places, and Romans believed that Fauns inspired fear in men who traveled to remote or wild places. But the fawns would also sometimes guide people in need. The name Fawn is derived from Faunus, an ancient Roman deity of forests, fields, and herds. But during the 2nd century BCE, Faunus would become associated with the Greek god Pan. Originally, the fawn was depicted as a half-dressed man, but when the fawn became mixed up with the Greek god Pan and the satyrs of Greek mythology, it morphed into the half-man, half-goat creature that we know today. In Greek mythology, a satyr is a male nature spirit with ears and a tail resembling that of a horse, not a goat. They were known for their love of wine, music, and dancing. They were also known as being more dangerous than the fawn, especially if you were a woman, as they often tried to force themselves onto women. One of the most famous tales involving a satyr is the tale of Orpheus and his wife Eurydice. While she was walking in tall grass, Eurydice was attacked by a satyr. Trying to escape the creature, Eurydice would trip and fall into a nest of vipers, where she suffered a fatal bite on her heel. She would later be discovered by Orpheus. In his grief, Orpheus played such sad and mournful music that even the gods could not help but weep. He would then be given the advice to travel to the underworld to try to get Eurydice back. He did just that, and with his music he was able to convince Hades and Persephone to allow Eurydice to return with him to Earth. But only on one condition. He had to walk in front of her and he was not allowed to look back until they both had reached the upper world. Orpheus readily agreed to this, and he then set off with Eurydice following him. 
However, his desire to see his wife again became too much for him. And as soon as he reached the upper world, he eagerly turned around to look at her, completely forgetting the deal he made with Hades. Because Eurydice had not crossed into the upper world yet, and as soon as Orpheus turned to look at her, she was immediately pulled back into the underworld. This time for good. The depiction of fawns as bipedal creatures with horns, legs and tail of a goat and the head, torso and arms of a human is borrowed from the satyrs who in turn gets their appearance from the god Pan. Half-human, half-animal hybrid creatures have captured human imagination for centuries. I've spoken of a few on this channel such as the Minotaur or the cases of cynocephaly, which is human body with a dog's head. So even though the Goatman legend can trace its roots to Greek and Roman mythology, it's still hard to say exactly where the urban legends of the cryptid originated. As I mentioned before, the one in Maryland is believed to originate from a newspaper article that links a folk tale to a recent death of a family's puppy. It seems both possible and likely that the other tales of Goatmen from across the country have similar origins. The Old Alton Bridge is another example, a legend that is rooted in the very possible evil acts done by evil people that became an urban legend of a cryptid. An urban legend where the victim became the monster instead of the monsters getting what they deserved. Another way of looking at it is that the use of an axe in some of these urban legends might hint that the real story could be that there was once a person with murderous intent wielding an axe and possibly wearing a mask that roamed the countryside that would inspire the urban legend of the Goatman. And it's possible that the myth of the satyr or the fawn might have fed into the urban legend, at least a little bit. Regardless of his origins, it is said that the goat man, in whatever form he takes, is one creature that you should avoid at all costs. <laughs> 